So uh, LibreOffice was born uh, uh, slightly more than 10 years ago because it was September 28. So it's um, uh, just uh, one month more than, almost one month more than 10 years. Uh, but the, uh, it's important to remember that in the year 2000, Sun uh, announced OpenOffice.org uh, and then in 2010, uh, the OpenOffice.org community announced LibreOffice. Um, why I'm uh, uh, remembering those two days? Because uh, this is the history of a project that uh, goes back uh, quite a long time. So the first version of uh, Star Writer was released by Marco Burris, a German student at the time in 1985 and uh, become uh, an office suite uh, over time uh, with people uh, uh, developing it uh, in uh, out of Hamburg in Germany. So um, uh, in uh, after uh, the, the uh, Star Office, the product, the German product uh, first became very popular, but then uh, had to face the competition of Microsoft Office uh, and started to have some uh, issues. So at the end of uh, last uh, uh, century, uh, Sun approached Star Division and uh, decided to buy, uh, to acquire uh, the entire company and, is, uh, and the assets. Uh, because uh, uh, they needed, first, they needed uh, a software capable of running uh, on uh, their Spark machines, uh, so an office suite capable of running on, uh, on Sun computers. As otherwise, uh, every Sun employee had to uh, have a, a Sun workstation and a laptop uh, with, uh, with Office uh, on it. So, this was the, uh, the, the trigger, uh, but then uh, the uh, Sun realized that uh, it could, by donating the, the source code to the open source community, it could be possible to create a community around uh, that software because uh, it was uh, filling uh, an empty space in, uh, in the market. So, a free office suite uh, where the community could contribute, uh, especially uh, in, in terms of localizations and make it available in a high number of languages. So uh, over time, uh, we, uh, in, in 2009, uh, and uh, here uh, in this one, which is from uh, Swedish research, uh, it's easier to see the dates in 2009, but it was finalized in 2010, Oracle acquired the Sun. And it was clear since day one that uh, OpenOffice was not uh, a strategic software for Oracle. So the OpenOffice community, the, 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 what we can uh, call the leaders of the community, they met uh, behind the scenes uh, and worked hard uh, during 2010 uh, to fork uh, and create an independent project. The fork happened uh, on September 28, 2010. We chose the name LibreOffice uh, um, for a number of reasons, uh, uh, including the fact that it was uh, one of the few domains available in every geography without having to go and buy expensive names uh, around. Uh, and uh, we started the project. Uh, what happened is that uh, in 2011, um, Oracle, uh, uh, we can say um, heavily sponsored by IBM, uh, donated the open office code to uh, Apache Software uh, Foundation to create Apache Open Office. IBM uh, uh, didn't like the community to control the source code, uh, so they basically wanted to fight uh, LibreOffice, and they did it for uh, three years. Uh, 
uh, when it was clear that their project was not successful, they completely abandoned Apache Open Office. So Apache Open Office today is uh, um, not developed actively as much as LibreOffice. What we did uh, when we when we forked, we basically switched from the umbrella culture uh, where Sun was. Uh, uh, inspiring, protecting, and in some cases, blocking the community to a mixing bowl uh, where uh, all the members of the community could contribute uh, and uh, not only contribute, but lead uh, if uh, based on uh, uh, meritocracy. This uh, is the text of the announcement. Uh, and as you can see, the community of volunteers developing and promoting openoffice.org sets up an independent foundation to drive the further growth of the project. Uh, basically, what we did, uh, we realized that the innovation at OpenOffice was at serious risk uh, because there was a risk of abandon. And uh, what happened afterwards uh, confirmed our, uh, uh, our uh, uh, ideas. And uh, we took control of the code and uh, we relaunched the innovation. Uh, we, we have developed the project over 10 years. LibreOffice is now available on uh, different platforms, uh, not always with the LibreOffice name, uh, but always based on the LibreOffice technology, which is the engine uh, behind uh, all the different products. This is what happened the six months, the, what happens the 10 months before and uh, the 10 months after the fork. Uh, uh, the, the pie on the left uh, is 10 months before. As you can see, you have 66% uh, uh, by the Open Office division and 16% by Sun. Then there was Nobel contributing uh, uh, and other companies, but the uh, over. Uh, 80% was done by a single company, basically by a single company. After the fork, uh, uh, the situation was a lot more balanced. We, uh, we managed to uh, maintain this diversity over, over the years. Of course, there are uh, times where the diversity is uh, higher and times where the diversity is, uh, is uh, uh, not as much uh, as we would like it to, uh, to be. But in any case, uh, we have been attracting new developers uh, on a regular basis uh, since uh, that the day of the fork. Uh, and uh, so we basically were able to announce uh, LibreOffice 3.3 because we used uh, the same uh, numbering uh, scheme of OpenOffice at FOSDEM uh, 2011, so it was late January 2011. And when we announced, uh, we also announced our roadmap that was time-based with two major releases uh, every year, uh, basically synchronized with the Linux distributions uh, because that is uh, uh, our one of our reference market. It is, it is true that the majority of uh, our users are on Windows, uh, but uh, um, we provide uh, LibreOffice uh, to uh, Linux distribution as uh, they are downstream. And therefore, uh, we, we prefer to uh, respect uh, the schedule of Linux distribution because that was what was uh, more important uh, for us. In addition, we have uh, monthly or uh, bi-monthly bug fix releases. Uh, for instance, tomorrow we will announce uh, uh, 647, uh, and which is uh, will be the last uh, minor release of the 6.4 uh, family. Um, so far, we, we have never missed a single major release. Uh, in a few cases, uh, we slipped uh, the minor releases few days or a couple of weeks uh, because of security uh, issues that we wanted to solve before uh, getting to the user. So this uh, uh, is the announcement of the Document Foundation. This is the home page. The first one uh, is a little bit looks a little bit naive today, 
but uh, uh, is very important for us because uh, it's a German nonprofit uh, uh, which is uh, protecting uh, the spirit of the free uh, office uh, suite uh, and the free open source uh, software. Uh, the founding principles of the uh, the uh, foundation, we use a copyleft license. Uh, we started with uh, uh, LGPL and we added MPL. <clears throat> we don't have a contributor agreement. We are based on meritocracy. Our uh, community, the, the governance is expressed by the community. So you can become a member of the Document Foundation. And if you are a member, you can elect and be elected. And uh, we, have, uh, we are vendor independent because uh, we have a, a threshold. No company can have more than 30% of the votes uh, in any of the two main bodies, which are the board of director and the membership committee. Of course, uh, this vendor independence sometimes uh, is under discussion because there are companies uh, that contribute heavily that would like to see themselves uh, more represented. But I think uh, that we have to protect our principles. Of course, our main asset are the developers. We, we started with many developers and we have increased them. Actually, open office at the time of the fork was considered to be very difficult uh, as a source code to navigate. So the, the senior developers did, uh, they invented the easy access. So they basically um, found uh, small hacks uh, that uh, uh, put together could uh, get uh, to a completely new uh, feature or uh, a code uh, um, cleaning uh, or uh, code refactoring. Uh, easy acts are simple and accessible task. They have uh, allowed many developers to start uh, working on the LibreOffice code. Of course, uh, there was a huge mentoring effort by the senior developers. Uh, here is uh, uh, Michael Mix a well-known uh, uh, developers. Uh, it was a novel before, then uh, it was at SUSE, and then and now is at Collabora Productivity, uh, mentoring a uh, new, uh, a younger one. This is the number uh, of developers, the progression of developers uh, up to developer, the December 2012, uh, as you can see, uh, we had an impressive number coming on October 2010, uh, around 80 new developers. Uh, uh, this based, of course, on the enthusiasm of the announcement. But then uh, we managed to have uh, new developers uh, basically every month uh, up, up to today. Uh, we, at, at a certain point, we started, we, we stopped counting them because uh, it doesn't mean a lot uh, to count them after 10 years. Uh, uh, what is important is to see that there are commits on the source code. We uh, developers also started to uh, clean and uh, refactor the code. So for instance, there was a complete rewrite uh, of the uh, DMake build system. And now uh, building uh, LibreOffice is a lot easier than uh, it was in the past. Um, we added, uh, and this, uh, the, the chart goes up to 6.0. Again, uh, uh, when you have 30,000 unit tests, um, adding them is important, but of course it shows that we are adding them regularly. So um, sometimes we are not updating these charts uh, just because uh, now I think we have uh, demonstrated that we are, uh, uh, we, we can be trusted in terms of uh, development. So we, there was a growth of unit test. Uh, there, there is a system uh, for, uh, to test uh, low crashes and import and export crashes. Uh, there are tested for, um, 
automated testing uh, here you see test on calc also we translated german comments to english um, as i said before open office was born in germany and at first it was not supposed to become a global project so developers were commenting the source code in german which is doesn't make it uh, to com to to user-friendly for people uh, that are not speaking German uh, and uh, are used to uh, source code commented in English. So we uh, basically translated everything. Uh, and, uh, and these are the commits uh, by organization during the last two years. As you see, we have Collabora, volunteers, quite a large chunk, uh, Red Hat, CIB, uh muni tdf uh, uh, there are several people committing uh there may not be full-time developers but they are doing quite a lot of activities munich so the city of munich and uh, there are quite many other companies these are the same git commits uh, if you look at them uh, march 2018 february 2020 of course uh, you have summer and Christmas, uh, like for everyone, uh, developers are reducing their activity. Uh, in terms of quality, we use uh, uh, automated uh, uh, tools like Coverity Scan. And I think uh, that in regards with Coverity Scan, we did something uh, really uh, significant because we went down uh, to a defect density, which is 0 0.00 and something. As you can see, uh, we have a, on, this, on September 12, uh, this is at the time, more or less at the time of uh, uh, 7.0.1 or 7.0.2, uh, the source code, uh, 6 million, over 6 million of lines of code analyzed and one outstanding uh, issue uh, found by Coverity scan. Of course, Coverity is not uh, solving bugs, uh, but is helping to spot uh, weak points in uh, in the source code. And uh, just as a reference, uh, uh, LibreOffice is at zero, as you can as you you see. Average proprietary software is at zero point seven, and uh, average free open source software is at zero point sixty five. So these are uh, De this is a summary of data since 2016. Then we use a fuzzing tool. Uh, one of the most known is uh, Google OS Fuzz, uh, but we use others as well. And uh, they help us in uh, spotting, especially security and vulnerability, security issues and vulnerabilities before they can reach the user. We uh, uh, Crossing fingers, we have a very good track record in this term. Uh, so far, uh, we have been able to solve all vulnerabilities uh, before uh, they were released to the market. So within uh, the grace period, uh, when the vulnerability is announced uh, and when uh, it is, uh, is uh, announced internally and then is announced to the public. In general, what we have achieved uh, we have reduced the footprint, uh, but what do we, if we want to summarize, you have, we have paid down a substantial technical debt. OpenOffice was a very good product, but uh, for a number of reasons, uh, uh, was not keeping up uh, uh, with the same pace of the market. So although it was a good product, uh, it had some issues and we have been able to solve most of these issues. For instance, we are able to write uh, uh, Microsoft Office proprietary Office OpenXML file. Uh, I'm, I'm using the proprietary um, uh, term with, uh, for a reason, and we will get to this uh, later on. Of course, we have a very strong community uh, this is the situation of us on Ask LibreOffice. We are now um, considering an evolution to this course uh, to, for um, 
supporting uh, the users. And these are Bugzilla issues by status, uh, also March 2018, February 2020. Um, we provide, if you are curious about the updated numbers, you can go to dashboard.documentfoundation.org and you will find uh, all this data public. And we are uh, improving this data and providing additional data because we are still not happy how community contributions are, uh, are um, calculated. Um, these, are these are community contribution by numbers uh, according to the dashboard, but for instance, and I will uh, mention that later, uh, all the uh, translators, uh, most of the translators are not here and we have a very large number of uh, people active in localization. So as you can see, we have around 70 core people uh, doing 80% of the work. We have around uh, 180 regular ones uh, doing uh, around 15%. And then we have uh, 700 people, more or less casual ones, doing uh, 5%. Uh, don't be fooled by numbers. That 5% of uh, casual ones can be a security patch, uh, which is provided on demand, basically, because uh, we have uh, people that uh, is not actively developing LibreOffice, but is helping us in solving uh, se security issues. And this is a ge the geography of the LibreOffice community. Dark green is where we have members. Uh, light green is where we have the community, but don't, we don't have uh, members. Um, it's important uh, as you, of course, uh, as we realize, uh, Africa is the area where we are uh, less represented. We are making some efforts there to attract more people and to get in touch with more people. Unfortunately, the current situation uh, with the pandemics is not helping us. And uh, we, we were supposed to be, I was supposed to be with you face to face today but of course, uh, this uh, is now impossible. So I hope uh, next year, or if it's not next year, in two years, to be with you and uh, have a beer together and chat and discuss uh, face to face. As I was saying, uh, we have a huge native language community with localization teams. We have 145 active languages and 119 shipping languages. LibreOffice is by far the software available in more languages, more than uh, any other FOSS software, more than any other proprietary software. We wanted this to be recognized by Guinness World Record, but they told us that this uh, is a niche achievement. Probably they ignored the fact that in the world that there, is, there are uh, around 160 languages and we are the only software that is able to reach uh, most of the people in the world uh, and provide to most of the people in the world uh, uh, the software with their with, with a user interface and in many cases a dictionary in their uh, native language which is extremely important these are uh, very quickly, these are uh, the pictures of our different uh, um, conferences. We, uh, of course, this year the conference ended uh, last Saturday. Uh, in, uh, in 2019, we had the first continental uh, conferences, so in Tokyo for Asia and uh, in Asuncion, Paraguay for Latin America. Our conference was in Almeria in 2019, and we even had a bus with Libocon, with the Libocon sign. This year, the, the conference uh, uh, was supposed to be in Germany, Nuremberg, uh, but it was a virtual event. Uh, let's now switch uh, to uh, something where LibreOffice is, uh, is a key product, standard and interoperability. We all know that uh, 
uh, interoperability is a challenge. We most many people use uh, proprietary formats for interoperability. They think uh, that they have solved the interoperability challenge by adopting uh, Microsoft Office format. Um, I will show you that uh, this is just an illusion. Those formats are extremely bad and are uh, built uh, to uh, basically uh, do not allow interoperability. And uh, they are uh, designed for lock-in. Uh, this uh, is, uh, you see, the, the, is a sticker from uh, Free Software Foundation on the left side. And on the right side, there is a fantastic manual from Microsoft, how to lock in your clients. Is, uh, I don't know if it's still available on the, on the network, uh, but it was available. I have downloaded, if you are interested in it, I can send you the PDF. So uh, our answer to interoperability is uh, open document format. Of course, it's a challenge. Open document format uh, has not the money of Microsoft behind it, uh, but is a wildly superior uh, standard format. This is what uh, ODF allows you to have an interoperable file format that makes uh, the file completely decoupled from uh, the software. So when it comes uh, to document format, uh, you have a pseudo standard doc docx it doesn't make a lot of difference uh, doc xls and ppt are legacy ones uh, they were uh, a binary representation of the uh, what was in uh, the working memory of the computer but docx xlsx and pptx uh, are not very much different and then you have open document format uh, which is uh, the 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 three um, uh, extensions are ODT for text, ODS for spreadsheet, and ODP as presentation. Let's make a, a few examples so you can better understand uh, what I was saying. So let's imagine that you have LibreOffice at Shakespeare. And from 2017 to 2020, if you write to be or not to be, that is the question, you will get always get this uh, paragraph. Of course, this is the meat of the file is not the entire file, uh, but I and I happy to show you the entire file. But this is uh, the meat. Uh, it is uh, human readable. It's easy to understand, uh, and the references are clear. Uh, let's say that Microsoft Office at Shakespeare in 2017, in 2018, 2019, 2020 with Office on the desktop, and then 2020 with Office 365. As you can see, uh, there's no consistency, no homogeneity. Basically, the format changes. There are no communication for the user uh, to, to tell uh, when the format is changing. There is no versioning on uh, on the file, uh, the only information you have uh, is the version of the software that has produced the file, but not the version of the standard. And uh, let's make another example uh, with colors. So of course our brain sees red and the computer sees FF0000. LibreOffice uh, independently from the application is always format color, etc. Office Open XML uh, as fancy um, XML tagging as a very creative schema, uh, which is uh, one of the reason uh, uh, for uh, the huge size of the description. Basically, they had they reinvented the wheel for every um, potential uh, standard open standard that could be used. And they implemented the closed standard. So they had, of course, uh, to describe everything, to describe the schema. 
and uh, also to describe uh, what uh, was in was supposed to be deprecated uh, by 2010 and uh, has not been deprecated as of 2020 uh, which means uh, that uh, we are uh, still using a non-standard uh, proprietary format uh, with a very bad uh, description, uh, very difficult to implement uh, even for uh, developers. And what is uh, also uh, hidden is the cost of inadequate interoperability. This is an, uh, a document from the NIST, is the cost analysis of inadequate interoperability in the US capital facilities industry. To make it short, I have the document. If you are interested, I'm happy to send you the document. Uh, what it tells uh, is that uh, in a single industry uh, is a very big one, of course, uh, but in a single industry, the cost of interoperability is uh, half a billion dollar per year. I repeat, it's half a billion dollar per year, 500 million dollars uh, uh, that are used uh, to rewrite the documents because the original uh, cannot be accessed uh, because of interoperability faults. And also the complexity as a, as a side effect. And the side effect is that uh, uh, the number of vulnerabilities uh, is extremely high. This uh, is, a, is a research uh, um, commissioned in 2011 by the German government to Symantec, as you can see, PPT, DOC, uh, XLSX, uh, XLS, uh, RTF, PDF. Uh, these are the documents used uh, for targeted attack, so for malware. And this is uh, Kaspersky in 2000, early 2019. So they made a research uh, in the uh, Q4 or 2018. And they discovered that uh, 70, basically 70% 70 of all attacks were carried by uh, an office document. So there is not just a problem in interoperability, there is a problem in security and people continue to use uh, this format, which is less secure, less robust, uh, less interoperable, just because they've been using it for the last 20 years. Um, of course, resistance to change is a big issue, but people should understand uh, that in this case, the, ch the change is definitely for the better. Uh, Last few slides, the LibreOffice versions available. Uh, there is a desktop version from TDF, long-term supported version from Collabora and CIB, online versions from TDF, Collabora and CIB, an Android version from Collabora, iOS and Apple Store from Collabora and Windows Store from CIB. So basically, as I was saying before, LibreOffice is available on every platform and uh, all these product, in some cases, they don't carry the LibreOffice product. Uh, on Android, you should look for Collabora uh, Mobile or Collabora Online. Uh, but they are totally based on, uh, on the LibreOffice engine. Uh, last announcement, the LibreOffice 7. These are the main uh, new features. So the F1.3 support, the stand, a, a real standard makes progress uh, by declaring the version of the standard. A SCIA graphic engine and GPU acceleration. And uh, this is an ongoing effort of improved Microsoft Office compatibility. We have also aligned uh, to the last version of files. We cannot declare the version we are aligned because we don't know which version we are aligned to. We, we know that these uh, formats are produced by the last version of Microsoft Office. Um, user basis, LibreOffice user base estimate. Uh, we estimate to have around 200 million users, uh, more or less uh, 100 uh, are unique users. Another 100 million uh, are using also another Office suite, uh, can be of any kind, uh, so online. Uh, 
a proprietary, another fr um, free office suite. Uh, this is based on the fact that LibreOffice has basically 100% of desktop Linux, 10% of desktop Windows users, and 10% of desktop macOS users. But as there are some du duplication, we, uh, we, we decrease the number by 20% to the 200 million users I was uh, telling you before. Uh, what we are working at, uh, educating the enterprises about getting professional support for LibreOffice. It's amazing that most enterprises uh, using LibreOffice are not giving back anything. Um, I would say 95% of the donation that keep the project uh, uh, that maintain the project are from individuals. Uh, so uh, we should educate the enterprises about uh, um, giving back. Uh, they can buy an LTS version. They can uh, pay developers to solve uh, bugs. Uh, they can pay developers to, to, to develop new features. There are many different ways. Um, we are uh, um, accelerating uh, our investment on the certification program. We already have a certification program. Uh, there are around 50 developers and uh, 20 to 30 people uh, certified for uh, migrations and trainings um, because uh, being certified uh, allows people to uh, enrich their uh, CV and potentially uh, make money with LibreOffice. And of course, uh, educate people to help migration from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice based on professional support. We have published a migration protocol and a training protocol. They are uh, available for everyone on, uh, on our website and they are reference document for everyone. So this uh, was my last slide. Uh, uh, thank you so much for listening. I will stop sharing uh, so that you can see my face. Uh, I mean, you, you are not going to, um, uh, this is not a big, seeing my face is not a big advantage, but at least, uh, I mean, you know who you are speaking to or you are talking to. I don't think I see any questions in the, People is too, is too shy in North Carolina. I have a question. Sure. So you were you were talking about corporations. Yes. And, uh, you don't have that big a hit rate there. Are you seeing any trends by the corporations to move toward open source products generally, like LibreOffice? Uh, we have many, uh, you know, we have many users in the enterprise uh, area. The problem is that. Uh, we, as we don't invoice for a, for a license, we don't know who they are unless they show up. So for instance, uh, in Europe, uh, we have uh, uh, the third largest Italian bank. We have uh, the French government, uh, uh, which is a public administration, but is a large organization. We have the Italian Ministry of Defense. Uh, we have different regions in Spain. We have uh, um, uh, corporations in, uh, in different countries in, uh, in Europe. Uh, we know that there is a very large bank. I cannot, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to share the name, but a very large one in the States that is using LibreOffice on more or less uh, 40 to 50 percent of the, of the uh, desktops. Uh, so we have uh, uh, many of them in South America. Uh, there are others uh, in Asia. There are, uh, for instance, the government of Taiwan is entirely or almost entirely on, uh, on LibreOffice and on ODF. Uh, there are several cities in Japan uh, and several uh, large corporations in Japan. There are companies in Indonesia who are uh, using LibreOffice for uh, all their needs. Uh, um, when we know them uh, is because uh, either they interact with the community and we are extremely happy. I can make, for instance, the example of uh, an Indonesian company. The Indonesian company, they, they are making shoes. 
their name is uh, Sepatu Fans. <laughs> and uh, they, for, uh, they, they use LibreOffice. Uh, they are not a, such a large company, so they, they don't have the economic power also because of the Indonesian uh, you know, gross domestic product. But they, uh, what they are doing, they are uh, sponsoring the local community. So they basically they're giving the local community money for events. And this is already, I mean, it's, uh, it's what we need. Uh, we, don't, we are not asking uh, people to go bankrupt to buy LibreOffice if they cannot do this. But for instance, uh, giving money for events, uh, they, uh, the Indonesian have just done a localization, what we call a localization sprint for LibreOffice 7. So to, to localize, uh, and there were different students in different schools around the country. And the, 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 the Sepadu funds uh, gave them uh, money to pay for connectivity, to pay for people that had no computer. They basically uh, could rent the computers. I mean, uh, oh, Indonesia is not like the States or Italy where everyone has a computer. The, 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 the country has uh, areas where uh, it is really poor. So uh, the difference is astonishing in some cases, but uh, this is what we are looking for. Uh, you know, we, we don't want people to, to give us money if there's no reason, but let's say that if you use uh, LibreOffice on 100,000 desktops, I think uh, that you should pay some money because uh, this is a replacement for 100,000 licenses of Microsoft Office and we all know how much money that is. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Italian Ministry of Defense, they have decided uh, that they have 40% uh, of their 100,000 desktops with a long-term supported version because the other 60% uh, is uh, not used on a daily basis. Uh, they Basically, they are soldiers, so they are not uh, supposed, unless they are in an office, they are not supposed to to typewrite documents or to make spreadsheet or presentations, but sometimes they have to write a document. So, uh, if the, if this uh, is an occasional uh, user, they use the free version. If it is a full-time user, they have a paid version supported, and this is a fair uh, balance. Uh, they're paying quite a lot of money to uh, one of the ecosystem companies, and I think, uh, you know, there there are many ways. Uh, we could work uh, with these companies. Uh, the first thing is that they shouldn't be shy about getting in touch with the community. As you can see, we are normal people. Maybe, uh, you know, we, we, we need glasses to look uh, uh, when we are older to, to read, uh, uh, but this is something that happens to everyone. What do you think, <clears throat> Italo? will drive people in the direction of maybe contributing, even let's say maybe contribute a developer to help out? Or... Um, we have seen a, a big increase of interest uh, with, the, with the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, the number of down, we had a, uh, around between 25 and 40% more downloads uh, on a month by month. Uh, uh, if you think about uh, uh, work from home, uh, uh, of course, there were people that have had to stay at home uh, almost on a, on, on, on a very short notice. So not able to go and buy a product and to, so they had a, they had a computer at home. Uh, basically, they downloaded LibreOffice. They could uh, attend this. Uh, in some countries, uh, we are working uh, with the Ministry of uh, uh, Education for this. Uh, it's, uh, that I think uh, I, we are seeing uh, the interest is growing. Of course, uh, uh, we all know that the culture of uh, free open source software is not as widespread because uh, uh, basically we don't invest in communication as much as uh, the proprietary companies invest. 
And in some cases, even if we invest, we are not as good as they are uh, in terms of um, professional capabilities. So uh, I think there is an opportunity, but we should really work more together. And uh, I'm really grateful uh, to people like you that you are uh, accepting our talks because uh, it's important that then we reach more people, we explain uh, that there's nothing to be scared about uh, getting in touch with us uh, and uh, uh, doing something uh, for the benefit of the community. We have uh, many people in the States contributing. We, there is a professor in, um, I think he's in Pennsylvania somewhere, who is writing mm -hmm. manuals for uh, uh, US professors, manuals of LibreOffice Libre uh, according to the let's call agreed uh, habits uh, in the United States. It may be different from uh, what we are, know in Europe or uh, in, in other uh, continents. So it's, uh, that there is a huge ground to contribute. And uh, thank you. <clears throat> I have one final question to close. Do you have any, do you have any plans for um, like a community events or, or a, I don't know if it's called the hackathon, would it, where where a lot of people come together, maybe give uh, exposure. Uh, we uh, we do re them regularly in uh, Europe, uh, Asia, and South America. Uh, we find it difficult to do them in the States. I have to be really uh, uh, because uh, first uh, you, you are quite a large country in general uh, and uh, it's not so easy to uh, to organize that but um, in the past i remember we we talked with todd uh, to organize something but then uh, you know we have limited bandwidth in terms of manpower so uh, we we unfortunately we don't have a huge community in the states because we have many people maybe the community is big but they are uh, 500 miles from each other mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's not easy to while uh, with 500 miles i get to palermo in italy so you know it's a completely <laughs> different story uh, we uh, we we basically live all together a country that lives all together uh, so rome milan to rome is uh, less than 300 miles and uh, this is uh, what we consider you know north and center and Palermo is another 300 miles and we consider it south. And uh, if you look at Maine and Florida, it's probably okay. thousand miles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a, it's a challenge. Mm, I can imagine. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Italo. This was very eye-opening for me. I was not aware that these products existed. Now I am, I will certainly go look at them. I would also like to thank everyone for attending. I want to thank Amazon, again, our sponsor for sponsoring this talk.